it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. We have a lot of juicy Royal Tea to get through today so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. Well today is International Women's Day so happy International Women's Day to all of you awesome ladies out there. Now today your favorite feminist Meghan Markle was on a panel of other feminist icons like Brooke Shields and Katie Couric where they were sitting down for a feminist TED Talk at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas. Now they were there for a panel discussion called Breaking Barriers, Shaping Narratives, How Women Lead On and Off the Screen. Now it was a complete snooze fest, although there were a few interesting nuggets that we will talk about in a moment. Now I do find it very interesting, of course, how Meghan Markle once once again, made herself the poster child and victim of online bullying attacks. She talked about how when she was pregnant with her children, that she received a huge amount of cyber bullying and how it's not catty, it's cruel. But this is rich from a woman who literally started an entire hate campaign against the royal family. Now yesterday was March 7th, which is a little bit ironic considering it is the three-year anniversary of the infamous Oprah Winfrey interview where she was like, what? What? Because even Oprah was shocked at the lies that Harry and Meghan were spewing on national television. This was the start of the Sussex squad and the online constant hate that has been thrown at the royal family while Harry and Meghan never once in three years have come out publicly to say, oh my God, you guys, you know what? You guys got it wrong. You misinterpreted what we said. Please stop attacking my family. They are not racist. Never came out and told their Sussex squad, hey, you're being cyber bullies. Please quit attacking my family. Nope, not one time, but yet this little fraudster sits up there with her crocodile tears coming out her left eye. I find that very ironic and hypocritical. Now for the past three years, the royal family has gotten such a barrage of hate. They have many accounts called K -K -K Kate, where they have three K's in front of her name like a Ku Klux Klan member insinuating that Catherine is a racist. Yes, they even have a hashtag that says Catherine is racist. It's disgusting. Then they have all of the rumors about Catherine and her illness, her whereabouts, what happened to her, etc. And we know the royal family will never come out and defend themselves. So this trollop sat there on that stage with a straight face and played a martyr, a victim of all the cruel online attacks that she has suffered, yet forgetting that the day before, three years ago, she masterminded a huge attack on the royal family. And she has doubled down with her participation in Prince Harry's book Spare, in the participation of their Netflix docu-series, and of course in Omid Scooby-Doo's books where he came out and named King Charles and Catherine as the two royal family members who questioned Prince Archie's skin color. They have never once come out and said, you know what, we got a lot of things wrong on the Oprah show. So that is why people like myself, who by the way, the Royal Daily Tea was born on March 7th, 2021, because after I watched that interview, I was horrified and I made it my mission to defend the royal family and to correct the misinformation that Harry and Meghan and the Sussex squad have been spewing online. It is horrific and it all comes back to Harry and Meghan. So I do find it hilarious that she plays the victim without ever acknowledging the Oprah Winfrey interview, Omid Scobie, the book Spare, the Netflix series, 
nothing. She's even doubled down on her podcast, taking cheap shots at the royal family. Most recently, Harry took some digs at his own brother at his GMA interview. For the past four years, these two have played professional victims. They are throwing their family under the bus. They are trashing them for a profit, yet nobody wants to call them out. So that is why the Mexic community, guys, was born three to four years ago to call these two shysters out. Now, during the speech, there were a few golden nuggets. One of them was when Megan was announced on the stage. There was a very awkward moment where the woman appeared to kind of snub Meghan Markle. <laughs> it was a really weird hug. Megan goes in for this huge bear hug to the host, and the host just kind of awkwardly, you know, shakes her hand, puts her arm around her, but she definitely did not want to hug Meghan Markle. I did find that hilarious. While they were on the panel, a lot of people, including Megan Small, believed that Katie Couric was kind of being a little catty when she says to Megan, tell us about your Procter and Gamble story. I'm like, ah, are you kidding me? You literally have to bring up this damn story once again. You guys, I am convinced it is going to be on Meghan Markle's tombstone. Here lies Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, who wrote a letter to Procter & Gamble when she was 11. I'm serious. She needs to get it tattooed on her arse or something. Because seriously, if you're 42 years old, you're a woman activist, a humanitarian, and you literally always have to refer to a story when you were 11 years old as one of the greatest accomplishments that you've ever achieved in life sweetheart you haven't done much so one of the moments guys was absolutely hilarious after katie curry gets megan markle to bring up the gagalicious procter and gamble story where she talks about writing a letter to the people and they changed the narrative from being a very sexist narrative about women, you know, doing dishes instead changed it from women to the word people. You know, she was so proud of herself over this whole letter. Of course, we all know it was an actual school project and it wasn't just Meghan Markle. So she finishes giving this very moving speech of how she was very upset that the boys in the class were saying, oh, women belong in the kitchen. And she talks about how she advocated for Procter & Gamble, you know, to change the advert and get rid of all these sexist connotations in the television commercial and then Brooke kind of bust up and she's like well when I was a youngster I was playing an 11 year old prostitute <laughs> and Meghan Markle just kind of makes a face and she goes <gasps> she makes like this very weird and audible sound and then she kind of does this fake little you know laugh like oh <laughs> but you can tell Meghan Markle was definitely offended and a lot of people were saying that Brooke Shields looked like she might have had a little drinky drink you know she was slurring her words she was a little bit awkward I like Brooke Shields but she was a little off and that story was hilarious when I was 11 I was playing a prostitute and you can tell Meghan Markle didn't like Brooke Shields kind of adding that to the back of her story because that's Meghan Markle's story. How dare you steal her thunder? And of course, Meghan was not happy. So she was pretending to be happy, but she had a little bit of a mask slip. So in my opinion, I just thought it was ironic and hilarious and typical Meghan in her beige wrinkled outfit, of course, typical Meghan, that she just sat there and droned on about boring, outdated stuff about women. So again, I don't think these women are really in touch with reality. Sure, there is cyber bullying. I do not agree with people being cyber bullied. I think it's terrible. You know, I don't care for the Sussex squad, but I don't go on their page and get in fights with them and put dirty comments about people what I do is I go out and defend the royal family. I am deflecting from all of the negativity that Harry and Meghan and their followers have put out for the past four years. You know, it reminds me of that when you're a kid. You started it. You started it. Harry and Meghan started this, guys. 
They started the attack on the royal family four years ago. If they would have just kept their mouths shut and kept their head down and focused on becoming Hollywood stars and opening the TIG and doing whatever the hell it is they wanted to do, they might have been successful, but they ruined it by becoming the professional cyber bullies and victims. They are the ones who started this entire mess. But yet everyone still, you know, follows them and thinks that little Megsy Markle is a victim. She is not. She is a mass manipulator and a narcissist. But I did find it ironic that this panel discussion where Meghan Markle sat there and talked about being bullied online was the day after the three-year anniversary of the Oprah Winfrey interview where she sat there and told Porky Pie lies. Meghan Markle, honey, take a seat and shut your pie hole. Nobody is buying your fake crocodile tears and your lies anymore. 99.9% .9 of what you and Harold have said has been completely debunked. And speaking about porky pie lies, Harry, your lies are catching up to you, son. So we're going to talk about it in another video. Did he or didn't he lie on his visa application or is the book Spare a work of fiction? Well, guys, that is all the royal news that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.